gene editing. Scientists tried editing genes inside someone's body. Splicing. Modify them by inserting, splicing in DNA from another organism. And the creation of hybrid species is on the rise. These genetically engineered chimera are just the latest in a long line of unnatural creations to walk the earth. The first to master this forbidden science were the Watchers, otherwise known as ancient aliens, fallen angels, and the gods of old. Demons. These rebellious angels commingled their seed with human DNA and animal DNA. This history is documented in a vast number of ancient texts found on every continent on planet Earth. This commingling resulted in the creation of giants and what we commonly refer to as monsters. Chapter 2 According to Indian legends passed down from generation to generation, and archaeological discoveries of the past. Thousands of years ago, giants roamed the Americas. Before the Asians discovered and settled the New World, a race of red hair, white giants were already here. These giants were cannibals and grew to be an unbelievable height of 12 feet or even taller. Even tribes today still speak of those ancient days when the unapproachable giants roamed the land. Some of the remaining red-haired enemies were chased down and took refuge in a cave. A, a mummy three times older than King Tut has been discovered in the Nevada desert. It was found in 1940, about 12 miles east of the town of Fallon. It's a discovery that could possibly unlock some of humankind's early mysteries. Outside of Fallon, Nevada, the curious have come to learn more about an ancient society of people who once called this cave home. They discovered that the cave was underwater when it was formed 20,000 years ago until 7,000 years ago. Not far from this cave, a mummy has been discovered. A mummy that may reveal the secrets of an even older society. One that dates back to the dawn of civilization. This is extremely significant. This is unprecedented. We haven't had a find of this importance in my lifetime. One thing that makes the mummy, known as the spirit cave man, so important are these fine hand-woven fabrics discovered at the burial site. These textiles represent a, an extremely sophisticated ability to weave fabric by hand in a time where we didn't realize that people were doing that before. The mummy was discovered tightly bound up in this matting. Out of respect for the dead, this photograph and this drawing are the only two pictures scientists will allow to be publicly displayed. Recent tests reveal that the mummy is 9,000 years old. That's three times older than any other mummy yet discovered in North America. But scientists claim that the mummy is so old that he couldn't possibly be related to the Paiute Shoshones, that the mummy's tribe was here thousands and thousands of years before anybody else. They do not appear similar to any living Native American in North America. They have receding cheekbones, narrow face, long face. Some, some Indians have some of those traits, but as a group, those are Caucasoid traits. But what's interesting is, is that the finding of these giant mummified bodies and giant fossils and bones, uh, really, you can't pin to any particular location. They were finding them in Greece, they were finding them in Italy, they were finding them in the Middle East, they were finding them in America, and even if you write off a few of those as perhaps a hoax or a misinterpretation of something else, uh, you're still left with a tremendous amount of evidence to show that there were these giant beings at some point uh, walking the earth. Describe what we call the end times. It's interesting that one of the characteristics that shows up in Daniel 2 is that it says they will mingle themselves with, with, with the seed of men. Now, in order for them to mingle with the seed of men, the they have to be something other than the seed of men. So it's just a hint, but it's a profound hint that somehow in the end times there's going to be again some kind of commingling, some kind of intrusion into the genetic DNA makeup of people that's going to be a contaminant 
that will be part of the end times. And that's why there's so much scholastic interest in this UFO business, in the abduction narratives and, and reports. And we may very well be being plunged into a period of time about which the Bible says more than it does about any other period of time in history, including the time of the Gospels when Jesus walked the shores of Galilee. Not only were giants begotten of the fallen angels, but also monsters. According to the text, giants and monsters are two very distinct designations. Scripture validates that when angels inseminate human women, giant angel-human hybrid beings are generated. We can infer then that when angels inseminate animals, monstrous angel-animal hybrid For many ancient Christians, the Book of Enoch was essential, yet it was banned from the Christian Bible. The Book of Enoch begins with a warning to all humanity that a divine judgment has been rendered and a sentence will be imposed. God tells Enoch that all life on earth will be destroyed in a violent flood and, as with the story in Genesis, God blames this evil on the sons of God angels who lusted after the daughters of men. They would like to very much make contact with these mortal women. When they decided to descend upon earth, this unleashed upon the earth all sorts of problems. Not only these giants who are bloodthirsty and violent, but also these angels went on to teach humankind a variety of forbidden crafts. They also taught human beings how to make weapons of war. So what is that? And they, they told me that's the fairy. We've talked uh, to various people about, you know, John and Revelation describing locusts that uh, have wings. And I, I have pictures of creatures that look exactly like that. Within present-day Peru, numerous astonishing archaeological discoveries have been reported over the years. Although rumors of a conspiracy to conceal surrounds many of these discoveries, our next exhibits have fortunately made it to officially recorded status and have subsequently been archived. These remains are clear evidence that such skulls already had an elongated shape within utero, dispelling the myth that all such skulls can be explained away by tribal practices. Moreover, a rather unfortunate reality to realize is that this evidence of genetic characteristic has been widely known within the academic communities for over 160 years. Rivero and Tashuti within the Peruvian Antiquities, 1851, argued, due to this compounding evidence, that the protagonists of the artificial cranial deformation hypothesis are clearly mistaken. Since such proponents had only considered the skulls of adults, it becomes evident that a practice of concealment has continued to this day. Peer-reviewed papers, largely distributed and published in numerous academic sources, are not only deliberately incomplete studies, due to the absence of these proofs, within their conclusions, but clearly demonstrate a deliberate ignorance of the reality these skulls represent. In other words, the hypothesis fails to take into account the skulls of infants, and, most importantly, fetuses, which could have, for many years now, demonstrated to all the truth surrounding the world's elongated skulls. The same proof is to be found in other mummies from different locations also. A particularly good example can be found, though with some difficulty, within the Museum of Lima, currently under the direction of Don M. E. de Rivera. The evidence of elongated skulls present in fetuses and children has led to such characters as Rivero and Tashuti, Bellamy, Graves, among many others, to conclude that these skulls belong to an ancient race of people, a race who left their legacy of advanced influences upon the native population. This was no mere act of interspecies breeding, but instead extreme cross-species genetics involving the seed of the angels themselves. The Maya and Incas of South America believed a race of giants existed on Earth before the Great Flood. So did many other ancient civilizations. Some took them for gods, 
Others left likenesses of them in stone or wrote about them in their histories. Mass graves of giants were open. Some of them, some of the men eight feet tall, some of the women seven feet tall, uh, some records of men ten feet tall, and extremely large skulls. And extraordinarily, uh, some of these skulls had horns, some had extra rows of teeth, uh, some had other what we would call anomalies, but they were extraordinarily large skulls and uh, extraordinarily large people. Now, one of the great mysteries of the West is what happened to these giants? There was nearly 60 skeletons brought out of this cave, but today they're nowhere to be found. Is it that there is some kind of archaeological cover-up that has occurred here? How do you keep something secret? You hide it in plain sight. July 8, 1947. The flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If you look at the document sent to J. Edgar Hoover, three so-called flying saucers had been recovered in New Mexico. It has become the number one document viewed on the FBI website. There have been ET visitation, and people have been attempting to conceal this knowledge. We actually did recoveries of bodies that were involved with some of these crashes. I said, well, are you going to tell the public about it? And he says, no, we don't tell the public about this. There became to be this bifurcation, that this separation between legitimate national security and military operations and the deep black programs that are unacknowledged. 1,500 light years away from Earth, and we have this telescope that's been staring right at it for a number of years. But scientists say something strange keeps getting in between the telescope and the star, they can't figure out what it is. Let's bring in CBS News science contributor, Michio Kaku. Okay, what is happening? Why is this star causing scientists to wonder in fascination what might be out there? Well, we don't know. And this could be the biggest story of the past 500 years. Let's explain it. This is a star called Kik. I'm, I like to call it Kik, but it's K-I-C 8462852. That's its official name. The Kepler Space Telescope is out there. Can you explain why scientists and why space lovers are fascinated by what's happening with this? This star is breaking all the rules. We have to rewrite astronomy textbooks. Basically, if a planet eclipses the mother star, goes in front of the mother star, starlight drops by maybe 1% at maximum. However, starlight has been dropping at 22%. There is a colossal humongous object of some sort blocking the starlight from this star. Could it be an alien superstructure? That's what we're speculating. We've ruled out all the usual suspects, rogue planets, comets, asteroids, what's left but Star Trek. We're talking about what is called a Type II civilization that could build a gigantic sphere, perhaps bigger than Jupiter, to absorb starlight. And this, of course, is right out of science fiction, but here we are staring at it, and we have no logical explanation other than to assume that perhaps, just perhaps, it's made by a civilization a few thousand years more advanced than ours, like the Federation of Planets. Wait, does that put us back in, like, Cro-Magnon status? Well, compared to them, yes. Uh, we are what is called a Type Zero civilization. We get our energy from oil and coal. Type One would be like Buck Rogers, planetary civilization. This civilization is stellar. They can manipulate the energy of a star if it pans out. Hello, I'm Andrew Lewis Edelman, and I'm going to briefly share with you a testimony to Jesus Christ. It's a pretty heavy-duty one. Let's see, I started out, I was brought into witchcraft when I was 11 years old. I was in my 20s. I found myself visiting an occult bookshop. Sh bought this cassette tape that had uh, the pictures of Palladian aliens on the front. Uh, dressed in Egyptian garb. They had uh, peach colored skin and bright blue eyes. A little different from the alien greys that you normally see. They, they looked real friendly and, and supposedly listened to this music. It's like uh, ancient Mesopotamian Babylonian sounding music on it, recorded with uh, 
30, 33 crystals or something in the room in the studio and did this rich ritual dance and I did this for about a little over probably about a month and out of the blue one day just looking in the closet for something to wear I used the Lord's name in vain when I said that uh, a part hole opened up black circle that just opens up like a pupil dilating. First I saw one flash before me, then a second, then a third, then all three in front of me. It looked like alien, alien greys. I looked deep into the eye of the one in the front and I remember like we connected. It's like a, and I felt like scrambling my thoughts. Like it got into my psyche, it was reading everything about me. And then I saw like a screen floating in the air and I could still see them and I could see the screen and it showed me like visions of like riches and like gold and jewels and rubies and diamonds and then a light voice talking to me, a real gentle voice that sounded like, like the voice of God might sound. Um, and it was talking to me and it said I will give you all of these things if you will bow down if you will deny your God and bow down and worship us as God that's what they told me telepathically their mouths did not move okay and then I, I stood back and said if this is my destiny and so be it if not in the name of the blood of Jesus Christ, I command you to go back into the foul abyss from whence you came. When I said that, in the name of the blood of Jesus Christ, they instantly transformed from the alien grave look and showed their, what they really looked like. They were like these hideous see-through like jellyfish, like blob, dark maroon, red colored things with black horny toed horns like all over their bodies. And their eyes were like still real big, but they're like trying to squeeze in a look at me because it was like bright light coming from me from the Holy Spirit of God. Since I rejected the offer, I was at the crossroads selling my soul to the devil, getting into that witchcraft, new age garbage. And Jesus Christ called me back and saved me in a nick of time. And instantly they got they're shrieking and got sucked back into that black black portal dilated and they're gone and the whole room my room like filled with this like real comfortable warm glowing light and I felt God's presence so strong and I <laughs> I humbled myself I, I told God I would never, ever, ever mess with that garbage ever again. Please forgive me, Lord. And ever since that day, I have noticed things around me more. And uh, I believe it's part of my mission here in this life to point these things out to people when I see them. And to let you know the truth and how you can fight these things if you ever back, come into battle with anything evil. Jesus Christ will deliver you. Praise God. To be continued. Thank you for watching. We would like to thank our viewers and subscribers for watching our videos. We appreciate all the encouragement and feedback. This channel really means so much to us. Our prayers are with you all. Please support Shattered Paradise by purchasing a t-shirt from our shop Apparel Dime on Spreadshirt.com. Now you can wear your faith on your sleeve. The shop features faith-based t-shirts for men, women, and kids. The link is in the description below. Thank you and God bless.